Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of the Ange Speed Shop. Today we're going to talk about the cam adjusters from the M156 and the M159 engine. So this is the C63, CL63, S63 and so on. <clears throat> so this is a common problem uh, that they uh, wear out and then you should buy a complete new adjuster. So I did some research about this and um, a company uh, close to me that I sometimes also drive uh, cars for reviews. They had a C63 and it had a rattling sound uh, on one of the cylinder banks. On the left bank was this. So and uh, so this was the most common thing to change and it was a wear out camera adjuster. They changed both camera adjusters on that side, intake and exhaust. And uh, yeah, I want to show you how they look on the inside and there's some things that you will read and hear about on YouTube also this is wrong and yeah that's I would just want to show you how it looks inside and what really happens so this is the exhaust side so these are the two part the different part numbers on it I don't know if you can see it otherwise I will put that down below the real part numbers this is the uh, this part number ends at 28 uh, 47. So that is an early early on. I think this is the third one that was on it. So they they changed a lot. So the intakes uh, are the same and the exhausts are also the same on both cylinder banks. So there are no differences in it. So this is the intake and the intake. Have a look. It ends on 30, 47. So I put the the, the numbers uh, down below the video. I think that's easier. So um, to show you how it really uh, how it really looks in there, I dismantled one. I can also dismantle the other one. Then you can see the the difference inside. So to start with, the cam gear. This is uh, they are run also to another gear, and that gear that holds the uh, the chain, the timing chain. So there is a pretension on these gears. To align them, and there's there's a tool for it. I don't have it here, and then you can uh, install them. And I think that's I don't really looked it up why that is, but I think it's to keep a little bit of tension on the gear so there is not going to be any play on it. I think that's the thing on it. And how does it look inside? As you can see this is uh, there were three springs in there. They look like this. They are just installed. There's only way, one way to uh, install them, They're just like this in there. <clears throat> and then this plate is on top of it. Uh, look, it's, it's, uh, you can also see there's some spaces in there. Look, this is it. And then you also need to put pretension on it. That's it. So there are the other bolts. This uh, sef of a sixth hole is for the uh, pretensioner. That's what I saw on the picture. It's all locked by this, by a spring over and, uh, over it. That's it. So if you remove this uh, uh, on the other side, you remove these bolts. There are 10.9 bolts. That's also the first thing I like to mention. There are people on the internet that say you ha there's not really a torque value for it because normally you change these completely. So you cannot. F I did not find a torque value, but this is a 10.9 volt. Some people say you have to torque them to 25 newton meters. So that's pretty wrong because a 10.9 volt, that's M6, six millimeters, need to be torqued to 14.7 newton meters. So if you put 25 newton meters on there. Then you will stretch it completely and it can come loose or break within a running engine. So 10.9 should be talked to 14.7 newton meters. So if you loosen them up, you can remove this plate. It's just nothing really to see on it. It's it's all like a hardened material, so nothing is is wrong with it. Most of the times you will have this small piece uh, stuck on it like this, just because there's oil, oil in between. Um, 
The next thing what you also have, so these, this is what you have on the gear. So it's like this. This is on top of here. So it will drop. So how is it installed? So there is a, a pin in here that should be centered with this. That's how you also dismantle it. This one aside. Then this is the adjuster. So there are uh, two oil parts in it. There is another part that I don't have here that goes uh, through the back, I think. Not sure, but there are two oil passages in it. Uh, these on the front and on the inside. The on the inside that will feed this, the other one will feed that part. So that makes sense, I think. So this part will also feed the other side. So if you put this in, if you open it, you will find it like this. So how is it adjusted? It's like this. So the rattling sound that you will hear is from is this clicking noise. So that is much worse than you think. It can really damage the complete uh, camshaft, the pass can break off. So if you have this rattling sound, don't go drive the car for another 10,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles or whatever. You need to change it because it will get worse. So um, this pin is in here. The spring is on top. This plastic piece is on here. That will make sure that the oil passage is better. I think that's because where it's for. Because you can see if, if there is, there's also an oil passage here. So these holes are in connection also with this passage to, it's a sort of return. So what happens, this one is now locked. This is how it should be. There's not really play in it. But, uh, so how does it work? The, there's getting oil pressure in the channel that's in between here that will press also on the bottom side of the pin and then it can be adjusted. But when you have a cold start it should be in this place like this. So it's a little bit sticky because it's a really tight fit. It should be like this. So how does it work? If you can see, I think this is the the worst one. There's coming oil pressure in here. This is all closed off. So what it's going to do, it will press the pin up and it will slide over to here. So if it's not locking in in the hole here perfectly, it will start to rattle like that. So that is the problem. What I also heard on the internet, people are saying, ah, this is normal. Uh, this wear, this is this is really wear. This is not normal. This should not be there. Be there. You will see the other one. I can uh, later on. I will remove this one. This is much less than this one. This is the intake. I think that they also changed the exhaust. I don't think this one had a problem because it's not worn out as extreme as this one. So this pin is in here and it's just it's just coming com up all the time. All the rattling noise is completely doing this. So it's if it starts wearing out it will get worse worse and, and worse. In no time it will wear out. So uh, then you have to buy a complete new adjuster. They are I think are around 700 euros. I will put the real price below the video. But uh, the only thing that really wears is this plate. This is the only thing that wears. So this is different from the intake than the exhaust. And uh, I think the rest is, I didn't really check, but I think the rest is completely the same. But they have a different part number on the intake and the exhaust. 
but everything is likely the same. The only thing that's different is this plate. It, this makes the intake or the exhaust. That's, I think it is like that. But so if you have, uh, this is like a harder material, this pin is a so is an harder than this, I think. But also is a trick that some people do, is put this pin upside down. Because one side is less worn than the other side, so I cannot really see it on this one, but it's hard to see. So they uh, switch it over, so it's what it's for example, it's like this, they switch it over to the other side, and then it should not rattle anymore. That can be, but it is a solution for a very short period of time because it will start to wear out again and then you have another problem. So the kilometers on the car where this adjuster is coming from, I thought it had done 50, 55,000 kilometers or something. So it, and it was only on one cylinder bank, the other one not. And it's not, I'm, it's not known to me if they already changed the other one. I don't know that. But so it doesn't make any sense on what mileage this will happen. But I think if you have a a car that is uh, short distance driving, so no long distances, so it will have more cold starts. I think this will happen earlier than on a higher mileage car. I think, but that yeah, that's not. Uh, yeah, I cannot prove that. But uh, so I'm. Uh, so you have to buy a complete new adjuster, a piece. So they are about 700 euros a piece. I will put the real price below the video. Also the part numbers. So the part numbers that were changed on this car, this is the intake left side, but it's the intake. Uh, this is not the last part number. I think there is an, a newer one I saw already listed. So there's an, uh, a newer one already. And this is the uh, exhaust part number. This is the last one. that I, So they have done some modifications to try to make it less. But yeah, you cannot buy uh, just this plate. So I think if you just can buy this plate and this pin, you can just rebuild them, put them back, and it's a much cheaper job than just change it completely out and throw this all away. Because there's nothing wrong with this this part except from the pin and the back plate. So I'm going to try to search a company that can that have these on the market. And if I find something, I will make another video on how to rebuild them. Because I think it's, uh, yeah, there are a lot of these engines sold and they all have this problem. So uh, there should be a solution for it. So I think the solution should be a material that's uh, harder than this and not uh, will not get this wear. Uh, is excessive like this. So if somebody is telling you this should be like this a little bit, that is not true. That's my opinion. Because uh, if you have a new one, it's completely round like on the other side. That's the way it should be because it needs to uh, build pressure underneath, push the pin up and then slide away. That's how it should be. So I'll put this aside and uh, dismantle this one and show you how it's how that is done. So this is just this is it. There's some oil in between, so it sticks a little bit. So you can see just like this. So I close this up again. This is it. Okay, to the other side. So this is a T30, Torx T30. I already loosened them up, but they should be 
Yeah, I think they should be around 14.7 Nm. That's a spec for a 10.9 M6 bolt. So, and now you can see the black plastic piece is over there. So you can take this off. There's a spring. It keeps it all down and pushed in. If there's no oily pressure, it will lock up in the position. So, now you should it's all a bit sticky because of the oil. So this is the gear. So now you could push this up. There's a pin. And now this is the dowel pin is in the it's a dowel pin over there. The other pin so you can see now I will get the other one next to it. So you can see now and they are different. This is the intake, intake and exhaust. And you can see the exhaust. I'll put it in a little bit. What the difference is in where. This is completely worn. And this is starting to worn out. But this cannot be the rattling problem. Not yet. And that's also weird why is the intake worn out faster than the exhaust, I don't know for sure. So, difference in pins, I could not really find any difference in it. Some people say they say they have a, a little flat point on one side more than the other. Not sure. So, I want to share this I think uh, this is why you should change them uh, before you will break something. I don't. I could not really find that there are people that are driving uh, like uh, a lot of miles with this problem and having a real problem. But I can imagine that if this this is what you will hear that this yeah, there should be a point that this these will start to break or here getting cracks because if the engine is rotating pretty fast so that rattling noise is uh, just within a minute it will hit the sides a lot of times so it can really damage something so hope you like the video uh, I'll put the info below the video here if you want to see more about my videos, uh, click in this corner on my logo. Go to my main page and uh, have a look at all the other videos. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my uh, to my channel and have a look on my website, yamespeedshop.com. There's all the information and pictures of these parts and uh, the part numbers and that sort of stuff. If I find a solution for this that's cheaper than just changing the complete thing because it's only the wearing of the plate and the pin, then I will uh, show you that info. So, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this video. If you got any comments on, on things that I maybe not sold or I did wrong, then let me know. So, thanks for watching. Bye bye.